This house is the first house that I attempted to get to passive house standards. We began this project with the goal of building a very sustainable, a single family dwelling that would be durable and last for hundreds of years. This was the stated goal of the homeowner. There's nothing wrong with feeling warm in the middle of winter when you live in Minnesota. So we started out knowing we were going to do some sort of energy efficiency. And then along the ways we decided, well, how energy efficient could we go? And got a flavor of the passive house and what that concept meant and um, how we would go about doing that. And does it work in this climate? And so it kind of became a neat science project uh, for us along the way. But what we tried to use as a major goal was what we call passive survivability. That this house could keep its occupants warm and safe, healthy and comfortable with a minimum of external energy input other than that which the sun gives us. If we have the available opportunity to say, well, I would shower at some point today, I'm not leaving to go do anything really important, um, it's cloudy in the morning, it's supposed to clear off in the afternoon, uh, the tanks, our water tanks are at a certain set temperature. If I shower now, then I would have to use energy to heat the water, take a shower versus waiting a few hours when the sun can heat up the tanks and then the water is essentially heated for free. So it, it really does play a little bit into what your behavior is, which I think is kind of how it should be. We've kind of lost track of how does the environment work and our place in it rather than us always controlling the environment. If the electric grid was turned off and this house had no power, they would not have hot water because we do need a small amount of electricity to run the pumps, even to generate the heat transfer from the solar thermal system. However, uh, if it was the dead of winter, uh, if the sun was shining, this house would stay warm enough to be comfortable without a conventional heating system, without electricity. Um, it has great daylight, so you can function in every space during the daylight hours um, without turning on electric light. This is a six inch thick concrete wall, what's called corefilled, so it's solid concrete. It's about 13 feet tall and 13 feet long. And this is nothing I invented, this is nothing new. This is basic passive solar design. Um, it uses thermal mass to capture the sunlight gained during the day and it absorbs and holds on to that heat because it's a cooler surface than the air, than the sun. And at night, when the house begins to cool down, this wall actually radiates the heat back out into the space. It's been storing it during the day, and it radiates it back out at night and keeps it warmer. In our very cold climate, the way that we begin to deal with this notion of passive survivability and very, very low energy housing is to technical phrase would be to increase the performance of the thermal envelope and the layman's terms would be add more insulation and more insulation is typically thicker so the walls of this house of the framed portion of the house are framed with two sets of wood stud walls what we call double stud walls so on the outside there's a stud wall on the inside right here there's a stud wall and in between is an empty cavity and the whole thing 14 inches deep is filled with dense packed cellulose insulation. And most cellulose insulation is made up of about 80% recycled content material. That's one of the reasons we choose it. It's non-toxic and also um, it is quiet. So we hear the noise from the rest of the house, but we don't hear the noise from outside. And this is a fairly busy street on the other side of this house and the very thick walls with dense packed cellulose insulation really keeps things quiet here and the homeowners have commented about that. They love it. So these extra thick walls, in addition to really, really improving the thermal quality of the house, I think also improve improves the living quality of the house. In this case, where I'm sitting, we actually extended the natural sill doubled it from about 14 inches to 28 inches to create an actual window seat where somebody can take a nap, sit with a cup of coffee, read, look at the view. But throughout the rest of the house, where we have just about 12 inch deep window sills, people have plants, they put objects, this is where the cat sleeps, and people also sit, especially in the living room.
These are triple pane windows. They're triple pane fiberglass windows made by Thermotech fiberglass. So we now test all of our houses with a blower door test at least once. Often we do it twice before the sheetrock is put on so that we can identify major areas of air leakage and actually fix them before the sheetrock is applied. And then after the sheetrock is applied and essentially everything is sealed up so that we can finish and determine that it was indeed tight enough. When we build very tight houses, in order to maintain indoor air quality and keep our occupants healthy and the house healthy, we need to provide what's called whole house me mechanical ventilation. That means we control the fresh air coming in and we control exhausting the stale air going out and we balance that. And the, what that means is we've simply calculated the amount of fresh air needed in a continuous flow to keep the occupants healthy and we bring in that much air and exhaust out that much air at the same time to keep the house in balance. We typically provide fresh air to all bedrooms and living spaces and we exhaust air out of the bathrooms and the kitchen. Usually we only need one distribution point into a sleeping space and so here's a distribution point down low. In a passive house and in a very cold climate we distribute some of the heat through the ventilation system as well. This isn't all that different from a forced air heating system that many of us are used to, but there's a fundamental difference and that is the airflow, that the rate at which the air is coming. And a forced air distribution system, word forced, typically moves a tremendous amount of air through that ductwork very rapidly and that's how they're quickly heating the air. It's at a higher rate than you would need for ventilation and that's why often houses with furnaces and forced air heating system are dry in the winter time because they're effectively dehumidifying the house by pulling out so much air and introducing so much drier fresh air so quickly. It, in this house, in this very cold climate, because we chose to deliver heated air to the upstairs living spaces through the ventilation system, we calculated what the peak heating load was. And that literally means how much heat did we need to deliver to a giving, given space to keep the occupants comfortable on the coldest day of the year. And we determined that the, a typical size for a ventilation port into a bedroom was not going to be able to provide enough heat even though it provides enough ventilation air. So we needed to add a second ventilation port into the bedroom. And so you can see a little grill there as well. So there's more ventilation air coming in under the window seat. We needed a second spot for it. And air sealing <clears throat> is labor. And it does, it's odd because in a way, air sealing, which is one of the most important factors in building an energy efficient house. We can lose a third or more of the heat from a house simply through air leakage. You can have the best windows, you can have the best insulation. If the envelope, if the exterior shell of the building is leaky and either losing air and or and you know letting cold air in, um, your efforts are semi-useless. <laughs> to certify as a passive house, the house after construction has to test at 0.6 air changes per hour at 50 pascals. This house tested at 0.7 air changes per hour at 50 pascals. So, so that one tenth more of an air change per hour, that's how much it takes to change all the air in the house, um, that, that lost us the certification. And there was, there was a moment of deep disappointment over that. And really it was followed by much more than a moment. It was followed by weeks and weeks of the opposite, of, of understanding and really celebration of what we'd achieved in this house. And the fact that whether or not there's a piece of paper that says this is a certified passive house, all indicators are this house is absolutely functioning as a passive house.